Bishara Adi Sababa Juba Djibouti Kampala Dar es Salaam na hapa Nairobi katika visiwa vya ngazija na ushelisheli ni saa moja usiku na ola maziwa makuu Rwanda Burundi na DRC ni saa moja jioni kumaanisha kwamba ni ule wakati wa Afrika Mashariki kipindi kinachoangazia masuala na matukio barani ya Afrika mimi ni Wellington Nyongesa tupate vidokezo Msomi wa shahada nyingi makerere atetea kisa alichohusika cha kuvua nguo hadharani. Jerry Kimachara tarudi juba kutimiza mahitaji ya mkataba au la ndilo swali miongoni mwa raia wa Afrika Mashariki. Wakuu kadhaa wa serikali na wasanii maarufu ulimwenguni kukongamana Nairobi kuanzisha ari mpya ya kukabili uindaji ya ramu. Na michezoni kikosi cha wachezaji raga cha Kenya chasifika kote baada ya mkondo wa Singapore. Je, Afrika Mashariki na vikosi vingine vya raga? Karibu kwa Afrika Mashariki Jumapili hii ya Aprili 24. Tunalikunjua jamvi hili nchini Uganda ambapo mtafiti mmoja katika chuo maarufu cha Makerere ametetea kisa alichohusika hivi majuzi cha kuvua nguo hadharani akisema kwamba ilikuwa ni njia ya kuteta dhidi ya dhuluma anazopewa na mkubwa wake. Daktari Stella Nyanzi sasa anatoa changamoto kwa wale wanaodai kwamba huenda anahana kilitimamu kufanya uchunguzi zaidi manake ilikuwa ndio njia ya pekee ya kupigania haki zake. Dada Mary Kilobi alisomea huko Makerere na sasa anasimulia kisa hicho. Huyu ni profesa wa chuo kikuu cha Makerere Kampala Uganda. Dalton. Profesa wa taasisi ya utafiti katika chuo kikuu cha Makerere. Hapa alikuwa imara za kwao kabla hazijampanda. Yes. Lakini kadri muda ulivyozidi kusonga kisomo kikamtoka na kuvua nguo watu waone sinema bila ada pasi na kujali kuwa alikuwa mtu maarufu katika nyanja za elimu. Chanzo cha kuonyesha uchi wake hadharani ni kufungwa kwa ofisi yake na idara hiyo ya utafiti chuoni. Dr. Stella Nyanzi yadaiwa alijichukua picha za uchi wake na kuziweka kwenye mitandao ya kijamii akipinga hatua iliyochukuliwa na taasisi hiyo. Chanzo cha taasisi hiyo kuifunga ofisi ni kwamba Dr. Nyanzi alikataa kuwafundisha wanafunzi wa shahada ya uzamifu yani PhD ili hali aliahidi angewafunza mwaka na mbili. Dr. Nyanzi hata hivyo alikanusha madai haya akisema kuwa kandarasi aliyotia saini haihusishi kufundisha. Baada ya kufunga ofisi yake taasisi ya utafiti ilimtaka Dr. Nyanzi kutumia maktaba kuu kufanya utafiti wake na vile vile kazi zake za binafsi. Profesa Mahmud Mamdani kupitia mtandao wa Twitter alisema kuwa tangu kuajiriwa kwake Dr. Nyanzi amekuwa akifanya kazi zake binafsi. Dr. Nyanzi alidai kuwa haki zake zimekiukwa na akaapa kupigania haki zake hata ikifikia kifo. Msomi huyu alivua nguo alipoona maafisa wa polisi akidai kuwa walikuwa wanaegemea upande wa wale wanaomdhulumu mkiwemo profesa Mamdani. Kitendo hicho kilimfanya waziri wa maadili nchini Uganda kuagiza kukamatwa kwake kwa kuvua nguo hadharani. Baada ya kutenda kitendo hicho, wanachoonea watu haya, ujumbe wake ulifika na matakwa yake kutiliwa maanani, pengine kuashiria msemo kuwa kuna njia nyingi za kuwapanya na kila nyani ana starehe zake. Kwani ofisi yake ilifunguliwa. Lakini haijabainika iwapo masharti yaliyowekwa ni iwapo Dr. Stella Nyanzi atalazimika kuwafundisha wanafunzi wa PhD. Mary Kilobi, makala ya Afrika Mashariki, KTN News. Na sasa tunaingia nchini Tanzania ambapo baada ya miongo mingi ya hangaiko kwa raia wanaoishi mtaa wa Kigamboni ambao hutegemea feri kuvuka hadi mji wa Dar es Salaam sasa hawatategemea feri tena maana kumejengwa daraja mpya. 
Rais John Pombe Magufuli amefungua daraja hilo ambalo linaunganisha kisiwa na mji wa Dar es Salaam. Mwakilishi wetu wa Tanzania ni Rajabu Hassan. Awali ungetaka kufika Kigamboni kusini mwa jiji la Dar es Salaam toka eneo la kati la jiji hili sharti ujipakie ndani ya feri. Joto, kelele na hatari ya ulichonacho kuibwa ilipaswa uzivumilie. Sasa kero hizo zitakuwa hadithi tu. Utazipata ukitaka tena kwa ridhaa yako. Kwa kuwa mzoe ya punda hapandi farasi lakini kiujumla ipo nafuu kwa sasa. Daraja hili la Kigamboni lina urefu wa mita 680 likiwa na upana wa mita 27.5 na linakuwa mbadala wa feri iliyounganisha wakazi wa Kigamboni na eneo la kati la jiji la Dar es Salaam kupitia mkondo wa bahari wa Kurasini. Ujenzi wake umefanywa na kampuni mbili kutoka China. China Railway 15 Group na China Bridge Engineering Group na ni miliki ya NCCF ambao ni mfuko wa hifadhi za jamii kwa asilimia sitini na serikali ya Tanzania ikimiliki daraja hilo kwa asilimia harubaini. Rais Magufuli kiongozi wa nchi amefungua daraja hilo rasmi hapa mjini Dar es Salaam. Tujipongeze sisi wa Tanzania. Kwa juhudi kubwa ambazo tumefanyika ndani ya nchi yetu kwa kufanikiwa kujenga madaraja makubwa makubwa kwa wakati mfupi sana. Kuna daraja la Mkapa lilishakamilika na inawezekana watu wengine wameshasahau kwamba pale kwenye daraja la Mkapa palikuwa na mateso makubwa watu walikuwa wanakaa pale hata miezi mitano hawavuki kuja Dar es Salaam Hili linakuwa daraja la kwanza la kuninginia katika nchi za Afrika Mashariki na la tatu Afrika kwa nchi za kusini mwa jangwa la Sahara ukiweka kando nchi ya Afrika Kusini Watumiajwa daraja hili wanafurahishwa na kukamilika kwake wakisema mkombozi amewadia na watalilinda daima Hapa lilipo daraja ndipo palikuwa na maboti ya kuvusha watu tukaondolewa hapa tukapelekwa upande wa pili kama mita kumi au ishirini tukao tunaendelea na shughuli zetu huko wao wanaendelea na ujenzi huu tulifanya hivi kwa kupokea yani ili swala la binominuizi ya barabara sitegemei kama anaweza katokea mtu akafanya uhalifu wa aina yoyote kwa sababu wote tunapaswa tulinde na hichi kitu kimeandaliwa kimewekwa hapa kwa ajili ya manufaa yetu sisi wenyewe. Kwa hiyo sidhani kama anaweza katokea mtu akafanya uhalifu. Na kama atatokea mtu mwenye akili ndogo kama hiyo akafanya jambo kama hilo, na imani wananchi wa kawaida tunamuona na kama tutamuona basi tunaweza tukanchukulia hatua za kisheria. Tutapunguza foleni kwenye pantoni. Kwa sababu pantoni zilikuwa kila mara mara mbovu mara moja inaharibika, moja inafanya kazi, mara mbili zinaharibika, zote mbili na kwa tafrani, mara kwa mzozo mwingi nini, fujo jingi lakini kwa leo kusema kweli kwanza tumshukuru Mwenyezi Mungu kwa kutujalia kukamilisha daraja hili la Kigamboni. Na vile vile tunatakiwa na sisi vile vile tuwe walinzi wa daraja hili sisi wananchi wa Kigamboni. Tusiwe waharibifu. Kwa sababu tumeona uwanja taifa kutengenezwa siku ulofunguliwa tu watu wamezao choni wameiba vifaa chungu mwa choni ni kitu kusema kweli haki yake kitu kizuri ndani ya Tanzania yetu. Kwa vile ile jaraja tulikuwa kwa sioni binafsi tulitunze kwa hali na mali tukimwona mtu anaharibu basi tumchukulie hatua. Mradi wa ujenzi wa daraja hili lililopewa jina la Mwalimu Nyerere ulianza mwaka 2012 na hadi kukamilika kiasi cha dola milioni 135 zimetumika kwa gharama ya ujenzi ikiwa ni jitihada za serikali za kuboresha miundo mbinu na kupunguza msongamano wa magari katika jiji la Dar es Salaam. Rajabu Hassan, KT News, Makala Afrika Mashariki, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. Kutoka Tanzania basi tuingie nchini Kenya ambapo baada ya kumalizika kesi zilizokuwa katika mahakama ICC, mjadala umeibuka kuhusu iwapo inafaa wakati huu kwa Kenya kujiondoa kwenye mkataba wa Roma unaongoza ICC. Francis Mtalaki amekuwa akifuatilia swala hilo na hata kuzungumza na mwana sheria mkuu wa Kenya Githu Mwingai na sasa naarifu 
Tangu kukamilika kwa kesi za naibu rais nchini Kenya William Ruto na mwanahabari Joshua Rapsan katika mahakama ya ICC, mawimbi nchini Kenya yamekuwa haki kwa waathiriwa na hatuma wa Kenya watatu ambao ni Walter Baraza, Paul Gishero na Philip Bet wanadaiwa kuingilia mashahidi. Hivyo basi muendesha mashtaka Fatou Ben Suda kaambulia patupu kutokana na ukosefu wa ushahidi wa kutosha. Alamisi mwanasheria mkuu nchini Kenya Gidhu Mwigai akatangaza kuwa Kenya itazindua rasmi mahakama ya kushughulikia kesi za jinai. Na sasa serikali ya Kenya inachokitaka kutoa kwa mwendesha mashtaka ni faili za watatu hao ili waweze kushughulikia kesi hizo kama taifa. Hata ikiwa hawatatupatia uh, stakabadhi zingine tutatumia yale waliotutumia kwa sababu kwa kesi ya baraza kwa kesi ya bet na mwenzake tayari wametutumia uh, zile affidavit na zinginezo chini ya kipengee sabini cha mkataba wa Roma taifa lolote lina uwezo kuitisha faili ikiwa kesi zinayosemekana ni ndogo na ni kwa misingi hii kwa Kenya inaomba afisi mwendesha mashtaka kurejesha mkono wa ushirikiano mwema Kenya imekuwa nao kwa zaidi ya miaka mitano sasa ya mchaka mchaka ya kesi za ICC wa Kenya sita waliokuwa wametuhumiwa kuhusika pakubwa katika machafuko ya baada ya uchaguzi nchini humo mwaka 2007 hapa Kenya tuna koti zetu tuna majaji wetu na pia wanaelewa sheria na watafanya haki ni haki ambayo serikali ya Kenya inaigamba kuwa itafikiwa ikipewa fursa ya kukamilisha kesi hizo. Mwanasheria mkuu akisema kuwa kauli za Rais Uhuru Kenyatta wiki jana kuwa hakuna mkenya atakayejipata ICC ilikuwa ni katika muktadha miwili. Hakuna mtu mwingine sisi tutaruhusu apelekwe pahali popote kama kuna sheria tuko na makoti yetu hapa. The president was saying we are undertaking such fundamental changes within our own domestic law it will never ever ever be necessary for any person to be tried overseas ya pili ni kuwalimaanisha kuwa kesi zilizoko ni ndogo mno kuendelea ICC aidha katika miaka mitano ya Kenya kushirikiana na ICC yapo waliojifunza na sasa wanapendekeza mageuzi wapo Kenya itabadilisha nia yake ya kujiondoa both in practice and in the jurisprudence of the court the prosecutor had been uh, 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 permitted powers that are not to be found in any other criminal justice system in any democracy in the world we want to see more transparency we want to see more involvement with uh, uh, with uh, with sovereign governments that are cooperating like Kenya was serikali ya Kenya kupitia bunge la 11 imewahi kuandaa sheria mbili kuanzia mchakato wa kujiondoa lakini mwanasheria mkuu anasema hilo ni jukumu la idara tofauti kupiga chapa Francis Mtalaki KT News Africa Mashariki Nam Karibu kwenye swala kuu ambapo leo katika kitengo hichi cha swala kuu tunaangazia taifa la Sudan Kusini. Je, Riek Machar atarejea lini mjini Juba kutekeleza mkataba wa amani? Ndilo swali ambalo raia wa Afrika Mashariki wanaliuliza kwa sasa tangu mpango huo kutangazwa karibu wiki mbili zilizopita. Wiki iliyomalizika kumekuwa na kuyumba. Taarifa kinzani kutolewa kuhusu iwapo atarejea ama hatarejea. Makna Maswa anafungua swala kuu kwa taarifa ifuatayo. Tangu tarehe 12 Aprili, Riek Machar amesubiriwa Juba lakini bado hajaonekana. Na sasa imebainika swala la Machar kuwasili na wanajeshi wengine 162 na kamanda wake Simon Gatwech Dual kufika na wengine 45 ndio kizingiti kikuu. Kwenye mahojiano na shirika la habari la Vice News mjini Pagak kwenye mpaka wa Ethiopia, Machar ameelezea tarehe ya ujio na changamoto zake. The lack of agreement over what types of armament that each party should have in Juba. Initially we started by saying demilitarizing Juba. To us the militarizing Juba while uh, deploying the level of troops stipulated in the agreement uh, meant no heavy armament and that includes tanks uh, artillery and all that uh, but after now we 
Juventus still has tanks. Aidha Machar alitaka mataifa mengine yaingilie kati mgogoro huo kuhusu silaha ili kufanikisha mkataba wa amani. Also the, the mediators and the, who are now the guarantors of the peace agreement. I think it's time for them to come in and do something like an arbitration over this issue. Uh, what types of armament should be in Juba, not only in Juba, also other towns. Kwa upande mwingine, kamanda wa vikosi vya machar Simon Dual anasemekana kuwa chini ya vikwazo vya usafiri vya umoja wa mataifa na Marekani. Huku machar akidai mkataba wa kusitisha mapigano haujaheshimiwa. But they don't accept the presence of SPLM IO forces. Awali Machar alidhibitisha kuwasili Juba kupitia kwa waraka lakini kufikia Jumatatu wiki hii waliomsubiri Juba wakaambulia patupu. Sababu ikisemekana kuwa matatizo ya usafiri. Machar amekuwa akitisha majeshi yake yawekwe Juba wakiafikiana na serikali ya Rais Salva Kir wanajeshi wake 1410 waingizwe mjini Juba. Lakini hatua hii imekumbwa na changamoto. Kufikia sasa wanajeshi wa Machar 1170 wamo mjini Juba lakini baadhi ya mabango ya kumlaki yameondolewa kwenye barabara za Juba. Nao wachanganuzi wa siasa wakisema mambo humo nchini hayajatulia. Mark na Maswa Afrika Mashariki KTN News. Naam. Asili ya zogo jipya kabisa Sudan Kusini ni ipi? kilichotatiza serikali hii mpya kabisa barani Afrika ambayo imeundwa mwaka 2011 kimekuwa kipi kwa tathmini hiyo na kupeleka studio ni kwa kijana mungwana Nicholas Wambua Asante sana mkuu wa kitengo bwana Wellington Nyongesa tuangazie tu msaibu ambao wamekuwa kikumba taifa hili ndogo la Afrika Mashariki ambalo ni Sudan Kusini kwa muda sasa kuanzia mwaka 2011 hawakuja kuwa na amani lakini leo katika kitengo hiki tunangazia, tunangazia msaibu ambao wamekuwa kikumba taifa hili na labda ni njia gani ambayo wamekuwa kielekea kutafuta suluhu msaibu hao ilianza Julai mwaka 2013 Machar na mawaziri wote wakafurushwa mamlakani kutoka uongozi wa Sudan Kusini. Hii ni hatua ambayo ilifuatia eh, lile uh, azma ama ile azma ya eh, Machar yake Machar kuweza kutangaza kuwa ataweza kumpinga Salva Kiir kiongozi wa Sudan Kusini na wakati huo akaamua kwamba hatua hii basi ilikuwa ya kutaka kumondoa mamlakani ndipo akaamua viongozi hao wote yeye uh, yake Machar pamoja na viongozi hao wengine ama um, wote wakam wa, wa, e, Salva Kira kama kwanza wote watandolewa mamlakani e, na ndipo mwaka e, tarehe 16 Disemba e, Salva Kira alienda mkutano na kama kwamba viongozi wote waweze kuhudhuria lakini Riek Machar pamoja na pamoja na wale viongozi wengine wa upinzani ambao walikuwa watatu wakamwa kwamba hawatahudhuria mkutano huu na ndipo basi Riek Machar akamwa kwamba viongozi hawa hawafai kabisa na akaweza kumstumu Riek Machar kwa kutaka ama kukuwa na nia ya kuweza kupindua serikali yake. Ndipo hapo vita vilianza na vita vikali vikaanza kati ya Nur na Dinka ambapo pia vileza kuendelea katika watu wale wengine wa Sudan Kusini ambao walihusisha jamii hizi mbili. Kufikia wakati huu taarifa ni kwamba zaidi ya maaskari 50,000 wameweza kufariki dunia huku watu zaidi ya milioni mbili nukta nne wakiweza kufurushwa makwao na kuweza kuwa wahamiaji katika nchi hiyo ya Sudan Kusini wameweza kuhamia pia mataifa mengine kuonesha tu jinsi uhasama ulivyoingia kati ya viongozi hao wili na kuweza kuenea kwa watu wengine Atua ya amani imekuwa ikichukuliwa kwa muda katika taifa hili la Sudan Kusini likihusisha mataifa Afrika Mashariki na pia mataifa mengine ama jamii ya dunia kuweza kuhakikisha kwamba taifa hili changa zaidi duniani limeweza kupata amani. Kir na Macharo leweza kuweka mkataba wa amani mnamo Agasti mwaka 2014 wa kuweza kuishi ama kukaa kwa miezi 30 na baada ya hapo waweze kufanya uchaguzi. Lakini mkataba huo hujaweza kutiliwa maanani na viongozi hawa wawili na kuweza mahali tu kapotelea lakini hawezezo kuzingatia ndipo sa tukakuwa na ile amani haikuzingatiwa na mpaka wa sasa ndipo viongozi hawa wawili wakaendelea kuzozana pamoja na jamii hizi katika Sudan Kusini Matar alifaa kuapishwa kuwa 
eh, makamu wa rais tarehe nane eh, tarehe kumi nane aprili mwezi huu mwaka huu hii ni baada ya kufurushwa katika uongozi wake kwa kama kama rais lakini ili kuweza kuleta ule utangamano na amani wakamwa kwamba ni sharti uh, machari yake machari aweze kuregishwa tena kuwa naibu wa rais lakini toka wakati huo haijawezekana kwani kila siku ya, ya kuja tarehe nane alipofaa kuja basi haikuwezekana ila tu ikagonga mwamba siku ya pili tarehe tisa alitarajiwa pia kuingia ambapo ilitajwa kwamba alikuwa aje na wanajeshi wake lakini hatua hii haikuweza kuafikiwa yeye alisema kwamba alikuwa tayari kurejea Sudan Kusini labda tu kuweza kurejesha ile amani matara itakana kurudishwa eh, kurudi na maelfu ya wanajeshi lakini hatua hii kakataliwa na kambo kwamba ataweza kutukurudi na maafisa ama wanajeshi tano ili waweze kuja kutego, kutangamana na Salva Kir na kuweza kujenga amani katika taifa la Sudan Kusini kufikia sasa hatua zinaendelea kupigwa kwa kisha kwamba machara narudi kila hatua wakisema kwamba hatua ya Rick Machar ama msimamo wake kuweza kurudi na maelfu ya maafisa wa polisi pamoja na vyombo vingine ama silaha za vita ya tuo hiyo ilikataliwa kabisa na kambo kwamba atapewa tu idadi hii ya 195 hiyo ni wanajeshi ambao wataweza kukuja nao lakini Rick Machar akadai kwamba Salva Kir ana mpango wa kuweza kuregesha amani ni hatua tu ambayo imechukuliwa na wengi ama msimamo umechukuliwa na wengi kwamba viongozi hao wili Amani tarejea katika eh, Sudan Kusini wapo viongozi hao wili wataweza kuketi pamoja ama kuweza kuweka zile tofauti zao kando na kuweza kuja pamoja kusema kwamba ndio kweli kama Sudan Kusini kwa niaba watu wetu tunahitaji amani ndipo wakasema kwamba viongozi hawa waje waketi pamoja Jack Machar awe naibu wa rais na Kir awe kiongozi ama rais wa taifa hilo Sudan Kusini baadaye waweze kufanya basi uchaguzi wana ni nani kati ya hao wili ambaye atakayeshinda Machar anatarajiwa kuingia Sudan Kusini wakati wote wote pale Juba ili kuweza kuchukua wafa huu wa naibu rais na hivyo basi tunatarajia tuone kwamba iwapo kweli hatua hii itaweza kurejesha amani katika taifa la Sudan Kusini Machar akiwa naibu wa rais na Salva Kira ambaye ni maadui hao wote wawili wareje pamoja waunde taifa hili upya na kuweza labda kurejesha amani ni taifa ambalo kwa sasa limekumbwa na masaibu mengi ikiwemo eh, njaa manake sasa hivi inasemekana kwamba watu wengi wajapanda manake wanaofia wakati wote ule huenda vita vikaanza upya lakini hatua hii wapo hao wili watakuja pamoja basi wa, wengi wamesema kwamba viongozi hao wili wakija waketi pamoja na waweze kukua pamoja na sera waweze kufikiria kwa niaba yule mwananchi wa kawaida basi wataweza kujenga amani na hivyo basi tuweza kuona taifa la Sudan Kusini likirejea katika hali yao ya kawaida kama walivyokuwa kitambo na kurejesha amani kwa kwa bwana Ellington Nyongesa nashukuru Naam asante sana kijana mngwana Nicholas Wambua kwa tathmini hiyo ya kina na je, raia wa Afrika Mashariki wanachukulia vipi mzozo huu mdogo wa taifa hilo jipya la Sudan Kusini? Tulipata kauli zao jijini Nairobi na vile vile Dar es Salaam Tanzania. Jack Machar is very right. Right? When they agreed this guy was to go for two terms, the two terms are over. He should just step down. There's no reason why this guy wants this guy back. Why did he drop him? And why has he hired him? Do we need to fight to get our rights? Do we have to kill to get our rights? Are you, are you getting me? Let that guy, I don't even want Jack Machar to go back. Let him continue fighting. Death is a solution. Death is a solution. Fighting is a solution. Death is a solution. Why does he think he's the right person for there? Then what is the solution to peace in South Sudan? Solution to peace is he steps down, people go for elections. Tegemea vile pia kiongozi wa wasi, Jack Machar. Pia alikuwa akiongojwa watu wa South Sudan wanamngoja viongozi wa South Sudan wote wanamngoja haje uh, na uunde na mwenzake wa uunde serikali ya trans uh, uh, na inategemea pia vile yeye hatakuwa hana ameuitikia ame ule mwito wa kurudi nchini na kujenga ule uhusiano mzuri na kuto, na kuomba pia wote tuwe na amani na inategemea vile pia uh, ulimwengu mzima vile ita itapatia uzaidisi wananchi wa South Sudan Kusini vile watasaidia kwa sababu uh, sio ati vile amani ama Riyang Machar akirudi alafu watu wa South Sudan waache 
waache peke yao factions hizo mbili lazima wapigwe international pressure ju watu wengi watu wa South Sudan wanateseka sana na bila watu kukaa chini wasikizane itakuwa ni hata sana wapate nini au wenyewe kusikizane nasikia anaenda na demand zingine ju anasema lazima ende na forces yake huko Juba na sasa government inakataa sasa naona hakuna trust between Rikmachar na Selvakir sasa hiyo kitu ndio inaleta noma sasa Mm. Atu seme rek machara tarudi juba. Mm. Mm. Wana labda ita ali takwaje. Itakuwa ni sawa. Rek machara kirudi juba. Watu wao unajua ametoka kwa ile kabila ya Nur. Hao Nur watasikia more comfortable na watakuwa na watakuwa psychologically prepared. Eh? Watakuwa na na peace kidogo. Eh? Sudan Kusini wamekuwa kipigana kwa wakati mrefu. Na kama mkenya naombea tu apate amani. Eh. We have agreed that uh, Dr. Riyak Maishar will work together with the President Salpakir Mayar in South Sudan uh, according to the agreement and I hope these are the two principles that will bring peace in South Sudan. Yes, you, you know when the incident happened in Juba, it is a political differences and political interests. That is something that uh, brings the, the mess in South Sudan. Now. Um, I think it's like the issue that we had before, it has been resolved. They have identified, they resolved it, of working together with one another. Um, uh, for them, because they are South Sudanese, so we cannot say we put on blame on the individual, because all of them, uh, they will not understand one another when they have a issues in the political uh, uh, party in SPLM. Na mbada ya swala kuu sasa tuingie kwenye siasa za Kenya. Uchaguzi mkuu katika taifa hilo utafanyika mwaka ujao, lakini ilivyo desturi na wa Kenya, siasa hupikwa na kukaangwa usiku na mchana. Tayari kuna ushindani kwenye vyama vikuu vya siasa vya taifa hilo na hasa muungano wa upinzani wa CODE. Nicholas Wambua anasimulia. In 2017 ninataka nitoe oparanya ndio waluya wajue. Nataka saa hii bwana Kalwale nikwambie mimi niko tayari kufesu wewe. Wakati wote ulingo wa siasa unazidi kushika moto. Kila kiongozi akipalilia makaya jiko lake kwa mapishi ya mwaka 2017. Mibabe wa siasa wako tayari kupigana kichwa kwa kichwa haswa katika kiti cha gavana miezi kumi na minne ijayo niko tayari bwana Kalwale kupambana na wewe do not worry about Kakamega i will not come to disrupt the order in court but if oparanya wants to meet me for primary nomination chini akitaka mwisho chini Vyombo vya siasa vya Rais Uhuru Kenyatta na Kinara wa Code Raila Odinga vinaonekana kupigwa na mawimbi makali wakati huu vinapokaribia ufuoni mawimbi ya mchujo We are determined to field one candidate per position everywhere in the country as a coalition. We don't want to compete amongst ourselves. If we have no uh, you know any concern that these are our strongholds, then why would you fear intra competition that everybody meets at the ballot. If you say this is my stronghold, why would you have a concern about a Ford Kenya candidate? Katika kaunti ya Mombasa, seneta wa sasa ameweka silaha zake tayari kumenyana na gavana Ali Hassan Joho kwa kiti hicho licha ya kuwa Joho tayari ametangaza nafasi hii kama hatua kupeperusha bendera ya urais mwaka 2022. Lakini chama cha Wepa kimetangaza hakitakubali mchuju wa muungano. I will be the last person to seek myself a direct nomination because then it, it threatens the entire credibility of the nomination process within the party. But where areas that require joint nomination we will do so. We will have to think through whether to have a joint elections board and how to give it capacity. Mrengo wa code haujaepuka mawimbi ya bahari ya siasa. Marubani wake wakitajwa kutokubaliana ni nani atakayeongoza chombo hicho. Tukio la majuzi la Kinara Raila Odinga kutohudhuria uzinduzi wa hatu ya mwenzake Moses Wetangula kuwa ni kiti cha urais limezua kivumbi cha hisia kali miongoni mwa wanakoda 
kiasi cha wengine kuanza kubashiri kuwa huenda muungano huo hautasimama kama ilivyotarajiwa they have their own in fighting between co, between uh, ODM and uh, and and uh, and uh, Fort Kenya and let me tell you Raila Odinga should not give us any other excuse he is the one who is frustrating Wetangula even if it is difficult to accept that there is competition for the presidential ticket ya ko waruhusu wa launch na waruhusu wa ombe kura even if it is difficult lakini wanasiasa katika muungano huo wamezidi kuhakikishia wa Kenya kuwa wako pamoja na kwamba chombo hicho kiwima i know there was a name you and i was part and parcel of that name you and we know very well what people are saying it's true as we sit here today we are looking forward Ifika Lonzo Musyoka to be a flag bearer in 2017. Amini kana mtaenda mbele and hakuna kizuizi in the name of God ambacho kitatokea hapo mbele. This is going to happen. The MOU that is there is between Kalonzo Musyoka and Raila Amolo Odinga. No one else. So what he says is hearsay. If that has to be spoken about that MOU. And you know this process of agreeing to that document it took it took days it took months uh, to, to, to debate it to agree on it jubilee haijaepuka wimbi hili baadhi ya viongozi wameonyesha dalili za kutojiunga na chama kipya cha jubilee party wakitoa sababu kuwa huenda vyama vidogo vikasahaulika na kutowapa wa Kenya nafasi sawa mwaka 2017 kwa hivyo 2017 mimi nitaomba kura na chama ingine si chama ya jubilee if you are not in jubilee i don't see you getting even an mc here leave alone any other party those for the preparation of small parties came because the nominations were not done right there was a lot of rigging manipulation during the nominations and this word of free and fair nominations should really be uh, should really we should really ensure that all the candidates and given an equal opportunity. Kwa hiyo jambo la muhimu sana kabisa ni kufanya utafiti na wewe ni utafiti ambao ni uhuru na wale ambao wanafanya utafiti wasije wakajua kwamba utafiti unaendelea ndipo sasa tujue kwamba nani mwenye kwa very popular katika ile eneo mwenye anaweza chaguliwa. Ni miezi 14 pekee iliyosalia kwa uchaguzi mkuu kuandaliwa hapa nchini. Lakini kwa sasa tatizo kuu katika miungano ni ule mchujo miungano ikiwa bado haijaamua iwapo mchuju utafanyika katika kiwango cha miungano hii au ni katika kiwango cha vyama vinavyohusika katika miungano Nicolas Omboa Afrika Mashariki KTN News Nairobi Ni Nicolas Omboa hapo akichanganua na kutathmini siasa za Kenya Hapo Jumamosi Aprili 30 Mawaziri kadhaa kutoka mataifa mbalimbali ulimwenguni watajumuika katika mji mkuu wa Kenya Nairobi kwenye hafla ya kuteketeza pembe za ndovu. Hafla hiyo inanuia kuongeza ari mpya kwenye vita vikali dhidi ya uindaji haramu ambao unatishia kumaliza ndovu kwenye misitu ya bara Afrika. Kijana mtulivu Mark na Maso anaofahamu mkubwa masuala ya mazingira na misitu. Maafisa wa shirika la huduma kwa wanyamapori Kenya KWS wakinakili na kupakia pembe za ndovu na vifaru tayari kwa uchomaji. This will be the largest burn ever uh, just to put things into perspective when we started in 1989 we burnt the largest at that time which was 12 tons. We've gone on we burnt um, uh, 5 tons in Manyani and last year we burnt 15 tons. So 105 tons is the largest we may never see a burn this size again. Pembe hizo zitateketezwa Jumamosi Aprili 30 kwenye mbuga ya kitaifa ya Nairobi. Kwa jumla ni tani 120 zilizonaswa na vyombo vya sheria, lakini ni 160 tu zitakazochomwa. Uh, it came down from the 120 we first indicated because uh, there are some very large tusks which are over 50 kilos which we thought we should keep for research and and just uh, to have a record because unfortunately uh, the tuskers who have tusks that big are diminishing at a fast rate so those ones we won't burn we'll keep them for research Kenya hutegemea sana utalii 
lakini mpigo wa uindaji haramu umechangia kudidimia kwa sekta hiyo pamoja na idadi za wanyama. Uindaji huu ulipigwa marufuku mwaka 1973 wakati ambapo idadi ya ndovu ilianza kushuka kutoka 1200 unusu hadi 2020 tu mwisho wa miaka ya 80. Poaching still remains a major problem across the continent. And the rate of births bisabi poaching the offtake is high and need to be addressed. So it's a major challenge not only in Kenya but across the continent. The worst region is Central Africa, followed by West Africa, then Eastern and Southern Africa last. Takriban marais wa nane watahudhuria na pia watu mashuhuri kwenye safu za sanaa na michezo kama mwimbaji Elton John, waigizaji Leonardo DiCaprio, Nicole Kidman na mchezaji basketball wa zamani wa Uchina Yao Ming wanatarajiwa. Huku Kenya ikizidi kupambana na uindaji haramu Uchomaji wa pembe za ndovu na vifaru ni moja wapo ya njia ambazo KWS inaamini itapunguza kasi mazoea ya uindaji haramu nchini. Mark na Maswa, KTN News. Naam, tukiondoka kwenye masuala ya mazingira sasa tuelekee Magharibi ya Afrika. Ambapo viongozi wa taifa la Nigeria wanakabili tatizo moja kwenye harakati zao za kuboresha maisha ya raia wa taifa hilo. Tatizo hilo linaletwa na tishio la ongezeko la juu sana la idadi ya watu. Kwa mujibu wa shirika la kutathmini sensa Global Population Reference Bureau, Nigeria katika muda wa miaka 30 ijayo itakuwa na watu milioni 400. Kijana si na jina la Kiswahili lakini ni mswahili haswa Elvis Kosgey anaarifu. Nchi ya Nigeria inapania kupitisha bajeti ambayo inalenga kutua mzigo mzito wa taifa hili ambalo uchumi wake umetishiwa na mfumuko wa bei unaochangia pakubwa na kushuka kwa bei ya mafuta. Dhana ambayo wadau wanahusika nchini humu wameisi utakuwa tu mchezo wa tufe kwa taifa ambalo idadi ya watu imeongezeka maradufu. Rais Muhammad Buhara anapanga kupitisha bajeti mwaka huu yenye kima cha bilioni 30 fedha ambazo zitalenga kukarabati muundo wa msingi ikiwemo ujenzi wa barabara na usambazaji wa umeme nchini humu rais huyo ambaye alichaguliwa kwa kigezo cha kuondoa wananchi wa Nigeria kutoka kwa minyororo ya umaskini na kupunguza kodi dhidi ya wananchi wake ameonekana kukabiliwa na changamoto ya mwaka mji wa Lagos pekee una zaidi ya watu milioni 23 ambapo pana kisiwa kuzaliwa kwa watoto kila kunapokucha jambo ambalo limeonekana kutatiza na kulemaza sekta mbalimbali. Budgets, annual budgets at this year is just roughly about over 3 billion dollars. So you can see that we need more collaboration. Uh, we need uh, to really explore more the uh, public uh, private partnership. Uh, we also need to increase our revenue base, bring more people into the task net so that we can even have more fund. But more importantly is that aspect of the public uh, private partnership that we are really looking towards towards exploring and ensuring that we get more investments in, in, in those direction. Upo wasiwasi kwamba uenda idadi ya watu ikongezeka hadi milioni 300 ifikapo mwaka 2030. Um, we have um, um, a pool of young persons that are probably not not very educated and those who are educated do not have to they do not have jobs to do and so they, they become a ready army for for the kind of insurgencies and and, and the disturbances we are seeing in, in parts of the country. Kuongezeka kwa watu walijikiti tu Nigeria bali pia mataifa ya bara Europa ambapo wengi katika matabaka ya chini ulazimika kusafiri uhaibuni ili kujichumia pato. Hata hivyo wadau katika bara Europa wamedai jambo hili limesababishwa na kutoimarika kwa vitengo vya usalama moja wapo ya sababu ikiwemo kundi ya ramu la Boko Haram. Aidha wengi ambao hawana kazi wamelazimika kuhamia mji wa Lagos kujichumia pato kina kikuu ni jinsi raia wa nchi hii wana uchu wa kuongeza familia cha ya changamoto hizi um, if god really blesses me and he gives me a good wife i want to have about six children yeah because i'm capable of taking good care of them and like my parents we were 12 so You don't expect uh, me to go for two children like six, seven. There will be challenges for planning uh, and this has been compounded by 
the dislocation in the northeast and uh, the quite challenging economic uh, situation around the states, I mean other states, uh, because of the unfavorable economic situations, we see more people coming to Lagos. And uh, that has uh, put a lot of strain on our resources. So we, we have to really provide more more resources, or more funds to be able to renew some of our facilities, to be able to provide additional infrastructures. And it's been quite challenging. We can do with more more fund and more revenue. Rais Mustafu Good Luck Jonathan aliwahi kuzua joto kuzidi joto lenyewe alipowataka wananchi wa Nigeria kupunguza kuzaana jambo ambalo lilimchongea kisiasa. Swala hili sasa limekuwa kiazi moto kwa Rais Buhari kwa sababu ya dini yake. Swala ambalo ameliepuka kwa muda. Elvis Kosgei Afrika Mashariki KTN News. Na sasa ni wakati wa kuvuta pumzi na Afrika Mashariki kirejea itakuwa ni awamu ya maisha Afrika. Makala yanayosimulia maisha ya vijijini na mijini ya wenyeji wa bara Afrika. Usiondoke. This is KTN News. There are universities, then there is the University of Nairobi. The university is not only Eastern and Central Africa's best, but also ranked among the top 3% universities worldwide. The University of Nairobi offers innovative, relevant, accredited, and market-driven academic programs, both at undergraduate and postgraduate levels. Make a date with us on our open days on the 28th, 29th, and 30th of April 2016 at the University of Nairobi Great Court. Come and interact with renowned scholars, sample our world-class facilities, familiarize with our diverse programs, apply instantly for our programs, and see our creative works and innovations. For more information, visit our website on www.uonbi.ac.ke. Today on Bamba TV, it's a bold look at current affairs that speculate on the direction of the world on 101 East at 7.30 p.m. on Al Jazeera. It's all about the people behind the news and getting the feelings along with the facts as one on World Stories at 8.15 p.m. on Dutchville TV.